What's up, Rage and Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Jr. You're watching a Rage and Rona review. Got a review for you. Last night I checked out Sicario Day of the Soldado. And this is the sequel to the 2015 action thriller hit Sicario, which was directed by Denis Villeneuve, who also went on to direct Blade Runner 2049. And those are both very solid films. Uh, Sicario starred Emily Blunt, Josh Brolin, and also Benicio Del Toro, which gave us brilliant performances. And the film ended up being a very critically acclaimed film. Um, like I said, outstanding performances. And it wasn't a full-on action movie. It was actually quite thought-provoking and it was, it was quite deep actually. It really made you think about like what's right and wrong and that was a very very it was kind of like a fresh air on the a, t a breath of fresh air in this genre so I really really liked it. thought it was a great film. Anyways now in 2018 three years after the original we now have Sicario Day of the Soldado. It's directed by Stefano um, Stefano excuse Excuse me. Stefano Salima, Emily Blunt is no longer in the picture, but thrown into the mix is Isabella Monir. And of course we have Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro back, which is great because they are the true badasses that really carry this film. And I'm going to give you my review in my expectations versus reality format. So let's just start off with my expectations. So my expectations for this film, the sequel, is really based on the trailers. I really didn't think that they were going to make a sequel to Sicario just because I was thinking like, well, it's not so much what more could they do, but I was thinking that, well, the story is already done. Like, this is this really a necessary sequel? What are they going to really do uh, in, this, in, this, in the sequel uh, besides just making it another adventure for these two guys, another mission to carry out? And that's essentially what it is. But when you watch the trailer, one thing that they do is exactly what most studios do with their sequels. And that is they try to make it bigger. With the trailers, they just market this film like an action movie. Like a full-on action movie. Like just very violent, lots of action, non-stop action. Just very raw, R-rated action. And that's essentially what these two-minute trailers have marketed to us. And as I was watching it, I was thinking, okay, this is cool. They're giving more action than the previous one because the previous one wasn't completely driven by action. But I think that the studios were thinking like, let's market this film as an action thriller and let's give these audiences what they thought they were missing in the first one. But I was thinking that I actually like that it had less action and more substance in the story. Uh, but I guess what I'm expecting for the to see in this film based on trailers is just non-stop action Just just action 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 That's what I'm expecting for this film because that's the nature of their characters Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro They're they just do things without rules They just kind of like they're elite and covert so whatever they do is like is not really um, approved by the government they just get the job done and so that's why they do what they do and they kill a uh, bad guys execution style but anyways like I said those are my expectations for the film I'm a little bit mixed on this like I'm mixed on what they actually gave us because they did give us a lot of action but it's not non-stop action, which is something I didn't ex expect to see. I thought we we're gonna get non-stop action just like it was marketed in the trailer that they're gonna lose the substance of the film, the substance of the story. Um, but actually they got a pretty good balance in. Um, the action wasn't like just like no holds barred and they just kept on going. It was actually um, pretty sparse. Like there are two major, uh, I think two or three major set pieces, uh, but it wasn't to the point where it was getting cartoony, where it was just way too over the top. It, it actually felt appropriate, uh, but um, definitely more than the first one. But I'm really, really happy and glad to say that they still kept a, a good story in there. And it was still driven by Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro's characters. Really good, solid performance from those two, as you can see there. As you, get, uh, as you already know, they're very, very uh, seasoned actors, so they put on really, really great performances. I'm not sure if I like this story more. I mean, I'll say that I like the first one more just because the direction was so good, but this one is, this one is still pretty unique in its way because it's not really dealing with drugs. It's more about this illegal immigration um, uh, issue, like this, this, uh, 
this this narrative and uh, I like that they uh, I like that this topic is is very current with uh, what's going on today uh, but they just managed to make it into an entertaining story so um, yeah I guess it exceeded my expectation in the sense that I didn't expect it to have a deep story which it still did um, uh, and it exceeded I mean but it didn't meet my expectations in the sense that I thought there was going to be more action but they actually spaced out the action and it wasn't as crazy as I thought it was going to be like, I thought we we're going to get like a bad boys 2 style like film where it was just they're just going all out and putting out a full-on war on the Mexican drug cartels. It's not that. So it didn't meet my expectations in the action, but it, it exceeded my expectations in the story. So I'm kind of at like a, a mixed realm, uh, per se. <laughs> but still good. It, it was still good. Um, so um, there you have it. Those are my, um, that's, those, that's my reality out of what I saw from the film. Now I'm gonna give you some things that didn't quite work for me. And if I had to really think about what didn't work, I would say that, um, like a weak point, I would say that while it did have a lot of, it did still have the shock value, it didn't have the same amount of, um, I guess shock value and that that energy and dread that the first one have. And I don't know what, what it really is about, about it that it didn't have it, but, in the first one, once you enter Mexico, it's like there's this feeling of dread and intensity and you just don't feel right. You don't, you always feel like they're in danger. In the second one, it's kind of like, okay, we already know what it's like. So it's already there. And these two guys, Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro, they're no longer mysterious anymore. So that part of the film, um, that part, the aspect of the film is no longer there. They're no longer mysterious. That sense of dread that we got when entering into Mexico is, is not as impactful as it was before because all of that was already given to us in the first film. And in a way, I still think this is kind of like, um, an unnecessary sequel, but it's still a solid movie. It's still a good movie. It just doesn't have the impact that the first one had. And I can't really pinpoint exactly what it is that didn't make this film as good. Now what did work for me for the film is that Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin are still badasses. Like it's it's awesome what they bring to the screen and they work so well together. But what really was great is that there's a new development in their characters, which of course I'm not gonna say, but this new development really of course gets you to think and it just brings more surprises into the movie. So that's really cool. I think that uh, Stefano Salima did a great job as well as uh, the writer, who, uh, Taylor Sheridan, who wrote the first one. They really did their best and tried to keeping that substance about the story and the whole situation still there and not try to make it this all out action, um, action uh, uh, film. Like uh, they're not trying to make it too, too over the top. Like it is over the top in the sense that and how they deal with the, the bad guys, but it is still, uh, it's still um, I guess still in the, the realm of reality, but that shock value is still there. Um, I, I like the story. I thought the story was different and it wasn't as um, great as the first one, but I still liked it because it was, it just felt so current. So that was definitely a good thing about it. And I also like that they, it wasn't a full on action fest. I'm glad that they didn't make it like that. It was marketed like that, but it definitely wasn't like that. It was definitely still in the realm of of uh, of uh, like um, uh, a a well made, a well put together action thriller, action suspense thriller. So that was good. This is a decent film. I don't think it's as great as the first one. Like the first one was definitely outstanding, but this is still a good, solid film, and I think it's just good to watch it. Just for the just for the performances of Benicio del Toro and Josh Brolin, I think it was good that Emily Blunt wasn't in this film because I don't think that it's necessary to put her in this film. I think that would just be kind of like putting her in just for the sake of bringing her back. But her character not being in it is not necessary. Um, I love Emily Blunt, but she didn't need to be in this film, so which is great. They didn't put her in there. This film is about the two, the two badasses that we love from the first one and putting them in different situations and new situations that um, is really quite a, a, um, a physical and mental struggle for them. So that was really, really good. And this is a solid film. I think you should definitely check it out. They definitely bring in more action. And on top of that, 
I love the fact that we're getting more of these military thrillers that is outside of the Middle East. I mean, there's a lot of struggles in the Middle East right now, but it's it's great that we're bringing more light to the situation of what's going on in Mexico. So that is really, really cool. So if you want to see something a little bit different and you want to see some really excellent performances, definitely check out Sicario, Day of the Soldado, because I think it's a solid action thriller. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think that's a very, very decent score. It's a decent film. I did give the original an 8.5 out of 10 because it is far superior, but this is still a pretty good um, uh, installment uh, should they decide to make this a franchise. Actually, I am looking forward to a next one if they decide to make another one. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you are into this genre and if you're in into any of the two actors, definitely check out this film. Scario, Day of the Soldado gets a 7.5 out of 10 from me. As always, if you enjoyed this review, you want to see more, hit that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation, also follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.